Hi friends, my name is Erin and I'm going to tell you the story of what happened when I chased my dream of being a permaculture farmer. In April of 2022, I started a mentorship at a permaculture food forest near Lake Huron in Ontario. My kids and I would live on the farm while I learned how to steward the land along permaculture principles with the goal of me eventually managing the farm when the owners retired. Living on this farm was a dream come true, except for one thing, there was nowhere on that farm for us to live. We moved to the farm at the end of March, and our temporary home would be our camper. The first five weeks in that camper were dreadfully cold. Only two degrees this morning, so this is one of the coldest mornings we've had yet. It's not a suitable place to live in the winter. So we knew that by the time summer was over, we would need a more permanent home. I would build a tiny house, something small enough that it could be moved if needed, but big enough that it could be a comfortable, long-term living arrangement for my two children and myself. I considered several tiny house designs, converting an old tractor trailer, stripping an old camper down to the trailer and rebuilding from scratch. But ultimately, I settled on a purpose-built 28-foot-long tiny house trailer for my base, and I would build my house on top of that. I picked my trailer up in early March. My truck was still buried in snow, so Laura Jean brought hers. And then the trailer sat and waited month after month until the garden was planted and I had time to get building. So today is officially my first day working on building the tiny house. My first mission is to sort out my metal I have to take it all off the tiny house trailer where it's been stored for the last three months and I need to divide it because it's all second hand I need to divide it into ones that are nice tidy rectangles and ones that are all bent and cut and out of shape originally I was just planning on using these just for my floor to keep the rats from getting into the floor but I'm noticing that I have enough of the nice pieces that I could probably use those for my roof hey girls yeah. So I went and I had a look at my design and yet I definitely have enough. These are definitely big enough to use for my roof. So that pile there is for roof. This pile here, I'm going to try and make them fit into a lining for this. Folding the tin to line my floor was a heck of a challenge for my very first task. I was able to fold some by hand using clamps and two by fours, but to fold the corrugated ends, Laura Jean had the idea to use the bucket of the tractor, which worked really well. And this is how it's looking so far. I've probably put in about four hours, maybe, give or take. So this is good progress. This is better than I thought I would have. Day one, look at that. Look at that. I'm trying to fasten the metal to the trailer, which has been an adventure. It's we're on day three of me trying to fasten the metal to the trailer. So the first attempt, I used a titanium, I mean a cobalt drill bit to drill through the tin and the trailer. And then I used these, these roofing screws to screw into the hole and, and then their tips got stuck in the trailer and broke off and uh, and that was that so that didn't work so I went and I got a larger drill bit and I tried again and this time the head broke off of the screw uh, so that didn't work so I finally went with my original plan which was to pre-drill the hole and put in self-tapping screws, which is awesome and all, except then when I went to put in the self-tapping screws, 
So this is a quarter inch socket and these are made for a 5 16th socket. So <laughs> I thought I was going to have to go back to the store for a third time, except luckily they have here this little thing that I was able to stick in there. And it's not perfect, but bum ba ba da! I got my first screw in. The first screw took me three days. Only 100 more to go. So three hours, two helpers, the metal is bolted down. So now that the tin is on the bottom of the tiny house trailer, I need to shore it up and make sure that there's no sneaky gaps that mice and rats can get in through. Look, you can see all the way down into the grass. I tried build, building something base. Like this is some leftover wire I have from building rabbit cages, but it is really fiddly and really not it wasn't working well for me. So someone recommended I try putting steel wool in those holes, which I think is a really good idea. It's gonna fit really nicely. And I, it's really flexible. I can sort of make it bigger or smaller or longer or fatter, depending on what the size of the hole is. So, so far that's working for me. Now I'm using this adhesive to make sure it sticks to the metal to make sure that the mice can't just pull it out when they can't chew through it. This stuff smells horrible, absolutely horrible. There's this great uh, tiny house build on YouTube with this woman who built her entire tiny house using stuff that doesn't have all these nasty, disgusting, potentially cancer-causing, allergen-causing chemicals in them. And I would love to do something like that. But my budget is tight enough as it is. So I am one week into my build, but in actual amount of time that I've actually worked, it's probably been about eight hours, but it's hard for me to say because I get interrupted a lot. Um, so it's probably been less than that. Uh, so if you don't have kids, it would not take you eight hours to get to this point. Eight hours worth of work in one week. I'm just gonna have to be happy with that because it's, it's so hot during the day that I can't work from about 10 a.m. until, well, right now it's seven o'clock and I still have rivers of sweat coming down me, but at least it's not like I can breathe. <laughs> um, so considering that I can only work in the early morning or in the late evening, and that means that like if something comes up right now and I need a new tool or a new part, all the stores are closed. So it waits until tomorrow morning to go get it. And then if I go to the store tomorrow morning, but I'm leaving my morning work time, but sometimes I can't work without the thing that I need. So, and then, you know, breakfast, dinner, lunch, 17 snacks, going to the bathroom with the girls because they refuse to go by themselves. Well, Abby, Abby refuses to go by herself. So, considering all that, considering that I was giving myself a month to do this floor, and I think I'll probably be done it maybe in one more week, I'm really happy with my progress. So what I'm doing right now is I'm cutting the styrofoam pieces to wrap all the way around the entire bowl of the tiny house trailer. And then the wood will go on top of the styrofoam. It's really easy to cut styrofoam. You just score it with a knife and then karate chop it, which is my kid's favorite job. So they're gonna be really unimpressed that I'm doing this while they're at their father's house. But such is life, forward ever forward. I have a really hard time with things not being perfect, but I remind myself it doesn't need to be perfect. I can fill in the gaps with spray foam inf insulation. It's going to be under my floor. No one's going to see it. People build houses all the time and most of them are not the perfectionists. So it will be fine. <laughs> I should really reiterate, this is not a channel that teaches you how to build a tiny house. <laughs> You should not be here to learn how to build a tiny house. You can be here to learn how to do something that's completely out of your comfort zone, even though you're pretty sure you'll fail. <laughs> you can learn that.
from watching my channel. But how to build a tiny house, there are better channels. There are better channels for that. So today's problem is, we got loads of rain the other day. I covered it with a tarp, but it wasn't a very good tarp. So there was like a swimming pool down here yesterday, like literally like two inches of water. So I drilled some holes in the bottom and most of it drained out, but I'm finding there is still some way up under there. So all my work to level the camper I am undoing. I'm lowering this end as much as I can and I'm raising that end as much as I can. And the water is slowly trickling down to the other end. And then I will mop it up with a towel or a mountain of towels. Which means I probably will not finish doing the rest of the joists today. Again. Everything takes longer than you think it's gonna. Studs are done. Hooray! No insulation. And just like that, the insulation's in. That took me like an hour, and I've never worked with insulation before, so like two thumbs up for that. I mean, yeah, I did get one glass splinter in my finger, but I'll take it. So we are now on vapor wrap layer, which seems pretty straightforward. And then next, is my floor. And if I can get that finished today, then I will only be 10 days behind where I want it to be, which is pretty exciting. enjoying this. The weeks leading up to it when I was designing and we weren't even getting, I wasn't getting started yet and I was getting really frustrated and worried and concerned. That wasn't fun. I didn't enjoy that. But once I started building and I actually started to have a lot of fun with this. I'm sure there will be stages where I think I've messed it all up and all I'll see is my mistakes and I'll be extremely upset and frustrated, but for now, I'm having fun. I made a mistake here. When I was putting in this joist, I couldn't get this one flush against, so I just stuck it there because it was easier. But of course that means that now when I put my, um, my floor plywood on, it only comes to here. And when you step on it, it just goes clunk, clunk. So I just took a couple of bits of scrap wood and stuck them in here so it has something to rest on. I'm not bolting these on or anything because it's kind of too late for that. And, but maybe I should. Maybe I'll regret it. There's only one way to find out.
tripping all over you, babe. Tripping all over me. So you remember this one here and I put these pieces in I was like, oh, they'll just be fine. I don't need to attach them. Well, this piece of wood kept popping up a little bit and I knew that was going to drive me crazy. So um, I took it up. I took it up off the ground and now I'm toenailing these guys in. The floor is in. The next step is building and raising the walls on the roof, which needs to be done as quickly as possible because I have a tarp that protects this anytime it rains but as soon as the walls start to go up I cannot protect it from the rain I just don't have a tarp that big so once I start raising the walls I have to have them up and the roof on and all of it sheathed as quickly as possible so the next two weeks I'm having a building extravaganza where I'm inviting everybody that I know who has a free minute or a free day to come out and help me with the walls culminating in a big wall and roof raising day on August 20th. It is about 39 degrees in the humidity tonight. The girls are at their dad's, so at least I don't have two tiny people holding tightly on to me. I am preparing for my big build weekends, which will be very exciting when it happens, if it happens. But the prep for that is really kind of overwhelming. It's a lot to prepare for someone who's never done anything even remotely like this before. I am poring over all of my plans, measuring everything, coming up with an extremely detailed cut list so that I can come up with a detailed shopping list so that I can order everything and have it delivered to the property this week so that I can start building the walls. I will start with the north wall because it's the simplest. I can start building the walls before people come so that I can, number one, get a sense of what I'm doing and what parts I need and what steps I need to take and so on and so forth. And number two, if I can have at least some of the walls built before my friends come, then that will be one less thing on our to-do list on the day. Because really what would be ideal would be when they are here, we, we're we just raising walls, sheathing, and wrapping. And that should be enough to keep us occupied for just one day. Sorry, not just the walls, also the roof. The roof needs to go on. And that's extremely complicated because it's 13 feet off the ground and the ridge post is 30 feet long it's gonna weigh a ton we don't have a crane or anything like that What I don't show in this video is how many times I have stopped the camera to go get someone a snack or to go get a new drill bit or to go get another battery or to go turn on an episode of Octonauts for the kids. It's been an hour since I uncovered this thing and so far I've drilled half of, of a screw and put on three clamps in an hour. You know, that's how it goes. So now in addition to my I don't even remember what this is. This is a half inch? Half inch drill bit. I now have a slightly smaller drill bit. It's electrical and like seven miles of extension cord leading all the way back to the barn. So I'm gonna see if I can punch through with the little one. Um, basically I think I've just dulled it. I did 10 holes yesterday. I did the entire sill plate all along that side. So I think I just dulled it and now I need to 
try to figure out how to make it do 10 on this side so that I don't have to buy a new one. So hopefully this works. So I started working at 10.30 this morning, all optimistic about finishing the entire south sill plate today. And then I needed to change the battery pack and then I needed to get a different drill bit and then I needed to... Hi girls. Abby needed me to wipe her bum and then I needed to change my battery again and then... And then the girls wanted me to put on a TV show for them. And then the drill just wouldn't drill the hole. I worked on it for 20 minutes and it didn't drill the hole. So I realized I needed to get a new drill bit. So I drove the 10 kilometers into town, but they were all sold out of half inch drill bits. So then we drove 30 kilometers in the other direction to the other hardware store where they were all out of half inch cobalt drill bits they only had half inch titanium drill belts so I bought one of those and then I went online to one of the stores in the city and ordered a, I ordered a half inch cobalt drill bit for when this titanium drill bit dies on me which will probably happen after about five holes maybe six holes I'm guessing and then we had to go to the library because the girls haven't been to the library in two days and they've already finished all their books they got there the last time and then we got home and we had to make dinner so here it is let's see 6.30, <laughs> I have not done a single thing on this tiny house. I haven't even done one hole of the south wall sill plate. So yesterday when I started the north wall sill plate, I thought I can do all of the sill plates in one day. And here we are at the end of day two and I haven't even done half. So this is why it takes a very long time to build a tiny house not because the actual building takes a long time because all the dicking around that's I'm putting in a half inch carriage bolt, flat washer, lock washer, and It's been all day, but I got in one bolt. This used to be a lot pointier. First interruption, I forgot my hat. I'm properly dressed for the weather. Let's try again. So I'm working on framing out the wheel well. I don't know the right way to do this. I'm just making it up as I go. Interruption number two, I need to go get some smaller screws. Okay, smaller screws. Try this again. Hi, babe. Yeah, she's climbing the willow tree. Huh? Where was it? In the pond. In the pond? Yeah. Is it still alive? Yeah. Interruption number three. Mauled guinea fowl. Okay. Poor thing. 
So this is the sill plate for the wheel well. It will be bolted here. Although it doesn't actually touch. So that's a bit irritating because I the first one I made was too short. And No, uh, it's too tall. Measure twice, cut twice. my wall. That's what. Here is the wall that I'm building first. This is my north wall. It has one door in it, which is my back door that goes to my um, my back porch, which will have my pantry and my fridge in it. Uh, but it's my simplest wall, so I wanted to start with the simplest wall. So here I go. So I actually managed to accomplish quite a lot today. I cut almost all the framing for the north wall. And uh, then I had to take the girls to their dad's and he happened to have for me that he brought from the city, the drill bit that I needed to finish putting my sill plates to the floor. But then I suddenly came down with a bit of a migraine. So that's it for tonight, I'll wrap it up. Hopefully I'll feel better tomorrow. Fingers crossed for fewer interruptions and more progress, but I feel less frustrated than I did yesterday at least. I got 10 hours of sleep. I had a great big healthy breakfast and I have my drill bit. The kids are at their dad's so there should be fewer interruptions. And I'm starting at 9 30. Fingers crossed. When the sorrow and despair Finally, and he said that these bolts are overkill. I didn't need to use half inch. But my answer is always, I'd rather overkill than underkill. And I don't really know what I'm doing. Interruption number one, two, but two dead batteries already. Solved the with mystery of why my batteries keep being, running out of charge. <laughs> so I put them on the charger in the house and whenever Laura walks by, she thought that a blinking light meant the battery was charged, so she was taking them off. Actually, a blinking light means it's charging, so none of my batteries ever got fully charged. <laughs> but, I mean, that's a good thing, because it means that they're not broken, <laughs> which is a good thing. So after much trial and error, 
the method that I have settled upon is this. First, I use the spade drill bit, one and one eighth of an inch, to create the hole for the head of the carriage bolt because they need to be countersunk in because there's gonna be wood flat on top of this. Second step is I use the cord drill with a small bit to pre-drill my hole through my metal because it is easier to drill a small hole in metal than it is to drill a big hole and also the corded drill doesn't drain my electricity but the hole at the end of this corded drill is too small to fit my big bit so once the small bit goes all the way through the metal I use the big bit very slowly and very carefully because it can kind of catch on the existing hole so I have to do it carefully uh, and I use this to finish the hole. It means I'm using a lot of tools, <laughs> but I'm getting there. I only have two more holes to make on this main part of the sill plate, and then I have to figure out what I'm gonna do with the wheel wells. So I'm not sure what to do here. I This metal isn't as thick as this metal down here, so I don't think I need to use these great big bolts. I could just use my self-tapping screws that I have got for the ends. But this is exposed. If someone sticks their finger underneath here and there's something sharp poking out, then they can get poked. So I think I want to use the big bolts even though I don't really need to use them on this. Uh, so yeah, I don't really know what to do. I'm just gonna fake it. So I went with bolts for the wheel well, which I gotta say were a lot easier than the bolts down there. So we accomplished quite a lot when my friends were here yesterday. We built Funny. the entire north wall yeah. and part of the south wall and cut all the pieces for the south wall. But of course I made loads of mistakes. In particular when it came to the sizes of the rough openings for all the windows and doors. I didn't do them properly. So they're all two inches shorter in all directions than they should have been. The rough opening is two, two inches smaller in all directions than it should have been. Yesterday I noticed the problem with the width, and so I quickly corrected for that, but I forgot about the height. And so this piece here is already completely assembled, and I'm realizing that rough opening, the window's not going to fit in there. It's two inches too tight this way. So I'm going to have to take that wall apart, fix the window, and put it back together. That week was a flurry of building. From sunrise to sunset, in 30 degree heat, more friends came to help, and before I knew it, the day of my building party had arrived. The turnout was amazing. Friends new and old showed up to help. We had so many extra hands that the walls went up in an hour and the massive ridge beam was assembled and raised before I knew it. Yeah! Oh my god, this is so cool. After months of imagining, designing, planning and dreaming, suddenly here was my house before me. So it was an amazing day. I spent much of the day it's better. I spent much of the day with a huge grin on my face. It was so cool seeing it all go up. I didn't make any big mistakes at all with the walls. There was a few little bits here and there, but nothing that we couldn't fix. With a little bit of ingenuity. So now I have what almost looks like a house.
But there's rain on the way, and my house is extremely vulnerable to water. And there's a huge problem with the work that we've done, and I haven't noticed it yet. The next few weeks will be the greatest test of how much I can get done before winter. In the next episode, I'm going to tell you what it was like living in an 11 and a half foot camper with two children and five cats for seven and a half months while I worked on building my tiny house. I'll tell you all about the life that we built at Wild on Turtle Island. And in the episode after that, we'll return to building my tiny house. It's honestly the best I can do. I'm not strong enough. And there's only one of me. Just push through a little bit longer. <laughs> I'm so excited that you joined me on this ride, and I look forward to telling you the rest of the story. Thanks for hanging out with me. You can't stand there. It's not, that's not a place for you, honey.